we on to another week, especially this week. Last week I talked about how hurry, how fast you need to get to a, get past a, a win of that statue, but now uh, we got a loss of that statue now too. So it was a uh, uh, a tough uh, game to uh, be a part of, and uh, you know I really feel a little bit bad for our fans and players and everybody who's involved. But at the same time, you know they got after us, so. Um, we got that behind us now. We're on to trying to see if we can get after uh, Coastal Carolina this week. Questions? What's it going to take to get the team back up to where You know what? Team? That's a good question. The first thing we got to do is we got to play better, you know, in some of our key positions. Um, uh, just to give an example, we uh, uh, didn't make a play that could have got us off the field earlier in the, uh, on the defensive side of the ball. And then we come back and on the first snap after we give up a score, they, you know, we get a bad snap. So, you know, places like center and, and, and defensive end and places like that where you've got an opportunity to make a play. When you get an opportunity, you got to make those plays. So, you know, it's going to take doing that kind of stuff, consistently playing more, uh, playing at a high level consistently for, consistently for us to be a better team. Given what's happened the first two games, do you have a feel of what this team really is? Or this is the week well, I feel like we're somewhere in between the two for sure. Uh, we're definitely not as good as we were the first week. We knew that from the very beginning, but you know, I'm hoping we weren't as bad. We aren't as bad as what I saw Saturday, but you know, after looking at the tape, you know, we were pretty bad. And uh, you know, I wish I could find a way to dress that up some, but you know, we got a week to fix some of those things. The best part about it is we saw most of what our issues were. Saturday and uh, you know uh, Clemson I got to take my house to Clemson they're really good and they played well and they beat us up up front and that kind of stuff but you know more than anything else it gave us a good indication of those things that we got to do better and uh, you know at this point now we can go on about the task of seeing if we can fix those or work on those things. You know it's a team that's pretty much on the level how do, how do you evaluate Coastal going into this match? Well I think Coastal's really good we had top five team top four team actually and, uh, you know, to make matters worse, they know how to win football games. You know, the two games that make you really aware of that statue, some is, you know, are the, the, uh, the game last year with us. I mean, you know, there was no way that they should have won that football game. And they had the will, the, the will and, uh, and, the, uh, and the ability to figure out how to get you know, some things done, they score in lots of different ways. You know, they scored in the special teams game last year to go ahead of us and then had the ability to get a two-point conversion to tie it up. Then we come, they come back against A&T. A&T goes up on them last week, 30 to 24. And uh, somehow or another don't make the extra point. I think their quarterback's helmet came off the, pre the, previous, pay the previous play. And at that point, then they had to take him out well. The... Uh, replacement snapper, the replacement holder, didn't get the football on. So they don't make the extra point. Kick off to Costa, they run right back for score. So they seem always in a pitch, you know, find a way, sometimes even outside of their regular offense and defensive uh, sizes of the ball to be able to uh, find a way to win a football game. So uh, I got to take my hat off to Coach Mobley and his staff. You know, they do a fantastic job. Of, uh, of of having a good team, sound team concept, and they can beat you in, in many ways. They had so much success run. They sort of had a balanced attack, so to speak. Um, how are you going to be able to handle them rushing and then giving you problems defending the pass the first two games? Right. Yeah, Alex Ross is is one of the top quarterbacks in our division, and uh, you know the offensive line is fantastic. So they can run the football extremely well. So, you know, with a, with a rushing attack that you've got to pay so much attention to, it becomes extremely tough to be able to defend the pass. Uh, they can be balanced in a way that you have a hard time deciding whether it's run or pass in some ways. And they've got a good solid play action pass game as well as their drop back, drop back passing game. So, you know, they do seem to be, uh, um, you know, as at 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 at, at worst, um, you know, one of the top two teams in the top five teams in the nation, at best, maybe one of the top teams in the nation. So, you know, every place you look, you know, uh, offense, defense, and kicking game, you know, they seem to be really good. You look at these next two games. Just how important is it that 
not just to win those games, but to at least have a better showing because it seems like people are basing this team's their impression is what happened last week that they think yeah. that's just Well, I think that's I think it's big for us to go out and play a lot better this week. We got to go out and show that we belong with the top teams in the country. Not only do we need to win, but we need to go out and show that we belong. And uh, you know that'll be part of our mission. We got to play a heck of a lot better than we played last week. You know, for us to have any kind of respectability. How do you feel about leadership on both sides of the ball? You know what? I think we got decent leadership on both sides. You know, lots of times leaders develop with, with success. You know, the fact that a guy, you know, or a coach or anybody can, you know, be able to uh, help, a, help a team uh, develop some good, solid uh, standards, uh, do things right, that kind of stuff. You know, it's based around, you know, their past performance, you know, what they've done and how, enough, how they've handled themselves. Uh, one of the deals we do is we, is we name our captains at the end of the year. We actually go through the season with, uh, with temporary captains of sorts. We have a weekly selection of captains. And uh, at the end of the whole process, after we've seen how guys handle themselves and do things and, and, and do community service and do all kinds of different kinds of things you can do to be a, you know, a good person that way, then we select captains. So uh, uh, a lot of your leadership you actually get by what people's actual actions are. And, uh, you know, I think we've got good leaders on both sides. We've got good guys. This is, and, and our team, you know, the biggest issue with this team right now, to be perfectly honest with you, is this youth. You know, we've got so many guys that are doing things for the first time. You know, our quarterbacks, for all practical purposes, are fresh young guys. You know, they play a little bit, but they young. Uh, about half our offensive lines that way. Um, uh, our, 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 uh, uh, defensive secondary is that way, you know, our kicking game is totally that way. So we got a bunch of youth on this team and you know, the big thing you got to do is just keep them from trying to do sometimes too much because they're so excited about wanting to play and, and, and be successful, that kind of stuff that they sometimes get off the tracks that way. But it's a great group of kids and, and uh, you know, they're, they're, they're fun and they were really, really disappointed after having gone through what we went through Saturday. But, and when you get in these games with these high, high-powered style offenses, running a lot of plays right behind each other, not ever taking like any kind of pause in the action, that kind of stuff. I think Clemson ran 94, 95 snaps against the Saturday. Is that what it was? Then, you know, you actually end up, I, th I think what you get in your stats, all those plays and counts, but anytime time I get a guy to go out and line up, <laughs> on our video, I'm pretty sure we had 94. Five snaps. Okay, so you know what happens is you end up, uh, uh, you know, exhausting a lot of your um, abilities, reserve uh, uh, strength and energy, and that kind of stuff. You know, real early in the process, sometimes you get past the point of return that way you don't have very much. So we got too deep down our depth chart too quickly, which was, uh, you know, which was a little bit of a surprise. How much did the offensive line problem have to do with the fact that you didn't have Lehman? Well, uh, that didn't help any, but, you know, the biggest problem we had earlier was that, uh, you know, we got a snap or two that were out of way. Um, you know, once we got that kind of have to settled, we got Victor Ishmael in there. You know, I thought that we uh, did better that way. Uh, the rest of it was mostly based around Clemson's defense, you know, their defensive front. Inside their tackles, we didn't block. And, uh, you know, that probably had more to do with it than anything, the fact that we had a couple of guys there that just kind of dominated us. And where do the injury stand at this point? Uh, better than what I thought last week. And, I mean, uh, last, uh, yesterday, maybe, the day before. Uh, we got most of those guys back. We got a couple of guys that are sore. We still got a couple of sore shoulders and some of that kind of stuff. But the only guy right now that looks like he's really doubtful is Alex Glover with an ankle, and he's going to probably try to go maybe around midweek himself. They're really going to work on him, try to see if we can get him going. But as of right now, I don't think we got anybody that's going to really totally miss the game on Saturday. You were on a two-quarterback system in last week's game. Is that something that you're going to stay with for a while? Well, it looks that way. Um, we'll try to – I think Colic is our air apparent guy. You know, we'd like to get him to the point where he could really run the show and be a, a good, comfortable, you know, and uh, an energetic leader that way. 
But at the same time, when we do run into a little bit of a hiccup of sorts, you know, then, then, then we've got to dare us in place and ready to go in a way that he can go out and spell it for a while and kind of give us a chance to settle him down, settle call it down a little bit, and maybe even get a little bit of a, of, of a, uh, of a push from, uh, from uh, Tadarius, maybe a little bit of a spot plug of sorts. So um, we'll see how it goes. We, we're going to play some of that by ear. You know, we really like to try to settle it and get them into the point where we can get one guy going, but at the same time, you know, we got to deal with the hand we dealt, we've been dealt right now. And right now it looks like we're going to try to play with, with both of them some. Uh, the, the percentage of which, how much of, of which we still trying to figure out. You said last week about you really not having an opinion about playing games against a Benedict after what happened Saturday. Do you have to sort of the same way when it comes to playing these guaranteed games when it comes to Clemson? Yeah, well, you know, all of it's money driven. You know, the Benedict deal is one where we try to put together, you know, a classic of sorts where, you know, we both, both universities have a chance to make a little dust that way. Um, the uh, Clemson deal is a money grab also. We're trying to make a few dollars that way. You know, it is what it is. You know, we try to do the very best we can of supporting our university and supporting our athletics program. You know, doing all we can to pass the gap that way. You know, we got to make some money, and, you, and, and the things that we got to do cost a good bit. A good bit. So at that point, uh, uh, we got to do the very best job we can of trying to, you know, drive the revenue, the revenue end of the uh, of the ledger. So uh, we understand that, and we feel we feel that we have a responsibility to do the very best we can. But that's got to do with the game. You know, we don't talk about that kind of that. Does, that's not the kind of stuff that drives us. You know, we see a football game there. We go in there and we do our football game deal and the rest of that kind of stuff we lead to the other folks. How do you feel the interest level in both those situations, Ben Egg and his Clemson? Are you think anybody in that level of Clemson? How do you view the interest level? Well, you know, I think both of them got their good points and their bad points. You know, I like to see Ben Egg play better. I like to see South Carolina State play better in the second in the second game. So you know, in both cases, both you know, there needs to be an improvement on on at least one of the sides. Uh, we need to, we definitely, can, we definitely can play better. And uh, you know, as this, it's, it was a little bit tough in this year that this, they called us. This team is a young team, you know, with some, uh, you know, with some immaturity and some of that kind of stuff that you try to, you know, drive to be, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit ahead of where they probably ought to be right now as far as is the whole scheme of things concerned. So we're still working at trying to get them to the point where they can execute at a high level. But, uh, you know, as this team grows older and we get a little more experience, I think you'll see a little bit better showing.